Okay, so on this problem, So we want to solve for x. x is part of the angle. Um, we have two different signs. And are the angles the same for these signs? No. One is x plus pi over 6. The other one's x minus pi over 6. So the angles don't match. So because the angles don't match, I can't like simplify this by saying, well, I got a sine plus a sine. So that's going to be 2 sine. I can't. I can't add those because they have different angles that we're working with. Um, somehow I want to I want to solve for x, and I'm going to have to find a you know is there a way to maybe get sine of x by itself? Can I distribute the sine to x and distribute it to pi over six? No, because this is not a multiplication problem, right? This is taking the sine of some angle. So it'd be nice if we had some kind of formula. That would help us change the way this looks, right? Do we have some formula that does that? We do, right? It's the sum formula for sine. So if we apply that to this first one, what's it going to become? This is where you want to pull that formula out. Where am I looking? Some indifference formulas on the left side, kind of midway down. So sine of what? X times cosine pi over 6. Is that it? Plus sine of pi over 6 times cosine of X. So that right there is equal to the first one. Okay, plus, now we have the second one to work with. We can split that up as well. So that becomes what? Plus or minus? Minus. And then all that's still equal to negative root 3 over 2. So it looks more complicated, but actually, it's it's actually going to lead to an answer. Where before we couldn't get the answer here, now we have just sine of x times something we can find. We just have a cosine of x. Um, still looks like we need to simplify this quite a bit. Um, what would you do next? What would be the next natural thing? Any ideas? Find the evaluate these. That's not a bad idea. So let's maybe work with that. So we're working now in radians. This is the first time we're switching to radians in this unit. Everything's been degrees before, but we worked with radians last unit. Pi over six is the same as what in degrees? Thirty degrees. Do you remember how to change radians to degrees? If I have pi over six, I can multiply by one eighty over pi. And so you can see that this is really 180 divided by 6, which is 30 degrees. And so if we look at our unit circle, 30 degrees, hypotenuse 1, this side length is 1 half. This is root 3 over 2. And so what's the cosine of pi over 6? Root 3 over 2. So we got the sine of x times root 3 over 2, I'll put that in front, um, plus 1 half times the cosine of x, plus root 3 over 2 times the sine of x, minus 1 half times the cosine of x is negative root 3 over 2. So we've, we've evaluated what we can evaluate there. So the, the the angles that are not x, the pi over 6, everything with that angle we evaluated. What's another thing we can do here? Combine like terms. And what do we get? What do we get when we add like terms? 
So what is what is root three over two sine x plus another root three over two sine x? Yeah. If you, I'll look at your work, but I want you to do what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Uh, what is it going to be? Two root three over two. Sine x. And then what's one half cosine x minus one half cosine x? Zero. Okay. So now we're down to root three times the sine of x is equal to negative root three over two. We need to get sine by itself. So next step. Divide by root three or multiply by. <laughs> Dividing by root three is the same as multiplying by what? One over root three. If I multiply both sides by one over root three, that's still going to multiply to one, and we get sine of x is negative root three over two root three. Can we simplify that? Can I reduce, can I just cancel out the root threes? Sure. So you get sine of x is negative one half. All right, so how do we how do we solve for x now at this stage? This is what we did last unit. We we had to find the reference angle and we had to find what quadrant we're in. So what quadrants are we in? Where is sine negative? Three and four. And the sine of what angle is one half? Is it the sine of 30, 45, or 60? 30. So a reference angle is 30 degrees. And 30 degrees, we just said, was pi over 6. And we need to put this in radians, not degrees. Half a circle is 6 pi over 6. So if we go an additional pi over 6, we get 7 pi over 6. A full circle is... 12 pi over 6. So I go back pi over 6 to get 11 pi over 6. So our answer is x is 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So we started we started by using the sum and difference formulas, okay? Then we we evaluated what we could and simplified it as much as we could, all the way down to sine of x equals negative one half. Then we're then we're finding the angle by asking ourselves what quadrant are we in, and what reference angle are we working with? Questions on one. Okay, so we're going to practice this again. Number two, the tangent of 2 pi minus x plus the cosine of 3 pi over 2 minus x is equal to zero. Again, I want you to solve for x in radians. So apply the formulas. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause and, and let you get started on this one. Thank you. 
So after you plug them into the formulas that you have, this is what it should look like. After you, after you change it out of the difference or the sum for the tangent and the cosine. Then you want to evaluate what you can evaluate. So I want to find out like what is what's tangent of two pi, uh, what's going to be my cosine of three pi over two, and those things. So two pi is on your positive x-axis, coming from that point at one comma zero, where your x value is your cosine and your y value is the sine. And so what's the tangent of two pi? It'll be zero over one, which is zero. Okay, so this is gonna take a value of zero. Um, this right here will take a value of zero. Cosine of three pi over two, three pi over two is gonna happen on this on the bottom of the y-axis. And the coordinate for that point would be on the unit circle, we're only going a distance of one from the center. So it'll be at zero, negative one. And the cosine's your x value. So that's also gonna be zero. And then the sine of three pi over two will be what? Negative one. And so I'm going to substitute in zeros and the negative one. I get zero minus tangent x over one plus zero times tangent x plus zero times the cosine of x minus one times the sine of x is equal to zero. And anything times zero is zero. So this ends up being the negative tangent x minus sine x equals zero. But we still have a problem because how do, you know one's in terms of tangent, one's in terms of sine. How do we solve for x in this case? Yeah. Okay, so if I divide all three parts by negative one, I get the positive tangent x plus sine x is equal to zero. And then change tangent into sine over cosine. And you get sine x over cosine x, that's our tangent, plus sine x over one is equal to zero. And then what? Make Get one fraction by uh, getting common denominators. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by cosine x. And now we have sine x plus sine x cosine x all over cosine x is equal to zero. Now what? So if a fraction is equal to zero, what does that tell you about the fraction? The top is zero. The bottom can't be zero, right? You can't divide by zero. So we know that the cos we know that the cosine of x can't be zero. So we keep that in the back of our mind. But then other than that, we get rid of our denominator and just say the numerator has to be equal to zero. And then we have something to solve with. So the sine of x plus the sine of x times the cosine of x is equal to zero. And now this looks a lot like what we did last unit. What would we do from here? Factor out the sine x. We're left with one plus cosine x equals zero, and go ahead and finish that. Solve for x. So at this stage, you should have set, separated your factors, set them equal to zero. The sine of x is zero, 
and 1 plus cosine of x is 0. So we get cosine of x is negative 1. And then you're thinking, where would this be? And should it be in a quadrant, or should it be on the x or y axis? And so if you think about sine and cosine of 30 degrees, 45, and 60, you're not going to get 0 or negative 1 as answers. That's going to happen when you're working with the x and y axis. So if cosine is your x value in the unit circle. That's going to happen right here. So that's your negative 1, 0. And that's at pi. And then if sine is 0, sine 0 and sine your y value, that's also happening at pi. But where else? At 0 or 2 pi. And I said don't use 2 pi, use 0 on this one. So our answer is going to be x equals 0 and x equals pi. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cosine. What's the cosine of 0? What's What's the cosine of zero? If you plug a zero degrees in. So what's positive one? So it's okay. But you're checking, uh, Abby's just checking, make sure we can't divide by zero and it's still going to be good. Okay. Good check. Uh, the next. The next example. Okay, is to verify, which is like prove. So you're going to work on the left side and show that it's equal to the right side. So you know what the answer should be, but you're going to use your sum and difference formulas to do this. Okay. So this is alpha and beta. Let's try it. Give it a try. All right, Abby, what's the first step? And what does it become? Uh, sine of alpha. Okay. Cosine beta. Okay. And then leave the denominator. So that's our first step. Hopefully you guys were able to do that just using the formula. Some of you got here and we're just stuck what to do next. So what's the next step, Abby? And when you split it to two fractions, so you take your first term on top, and what's the new what's the denominator going to be? Keep it the same. So you have the cosine alpha and the cosine beta minus and then second term was sine beta Cosine alpha and leave the denominator the same. All right, next step, Abby. And Perfect. All right, I owe you a candy. I'm going to give it to you. Okay, I got one more. Next one's worth two candies. Not yet. Okay, last, last one for today. It's worth two candies.
Follow you here, but I don't follow you here. It's because uh, since this is positive right here, mm -hmm. cosine squared y, you can uh, make that from that formula right here, sine squared u. Yeah, it needs to be separate before you do that. Can't do that. That's an illegal move. <laughs> yeah, it's an illegal move. Yep, yeah, right there. The next step is the tough one. The, the add the sum and difference formulas for both of them, mm -hmm. and then you multiply both. And yep. You get that. Yep. And then cosine squared y. So this is good, but you can't do this. That's an illegal move. But so this is good. This is wrong. So going from here to here. Got it. It's not true. Wait, are you on this one? Okay, but that's not. No, this is a plus sign. I have a multiplication. This is good right here. Mm -hmm. uh, how'd you go from here to here? Uh, I don't really know. I just I saw for the like trig. Or yeah. If you have cosine squared plus sine squared, that's uh, equal to one. Okay. Right? Yeah. You're almost done. Distribute. Uh, someone's almost there. You did it. You did it. We got a winner. Allison. You had to use a Pythagorean identity to help you out. 